that's my the street. Liberty sows its seed at Far Point Farms. Hey guys, it's Eric here at Far Point Farms. Check it out. A couple months ago, I did a review of a 100 amp hour Power Queen battery. Now, I don't know if I mentioned it in that video, but all of the lithium batteries I've been getting, I've been adding to our solar system. Here's a picture of it right here. It's a 1200 watt lithium powered solar setup that runs about a third, maybe a little bit more than a third of our house at this point. And so anytime any of these manufacturers reach out to me and say, we'd love you to check out our battery, I'm happy to do so because it adds storage capacity and reserve capacity to my solar system, which means that if we get a lot of rain or a lot of snow or a lot of whatever, and we don't generate a ton of power, I have extra time, extra energy stored up that I can burn. And so that's really cool. Well, Power Queen liked the video I made and they asked me if I was interested in doing a review of another battery for them. Of course I said yes. And I talked to them about what my system was. My system is not a 12 volt system, it's a 24 volt system. And then I was looking for something larger because every time I get a battery, it's a 100 amp hour battery and I have to hook it to another 100 amp hour 12 volt battery and I have to hook those in series. And in order to do that in series to equal 24 volts, so 24 volts, 100 amp hours is what you end up with if you link 200 amp hour 12 volt batteries. Now, if you link them parallel, you can make a 12 volt 200 amp hour battery. But again, my systems is a 24 volt system. Well, they said they actually have 24 volt 100 amp hour batteries. And that's what we have here today. I'm gonna to open it up. It is quite a bit heavier than each individual battery, but as it should be, because it's twice the size, twice the overall capacity, and twice the voltage. So they make batteries. I went on their website. They have batteries that range all the way down to 50 amps and 35 amp hour batteries, all the way up to 200 amp hour batteries in the 24 volt range. So that's pretty cool. Um, I'll just set all this aside for right now and we'll go through it. There's some nuts and bolts. One very big package. Holy smokes, is it big. All right, I'm going to drop this on the ground. Hopefully I can shake this off. There we go. And put this out. I do like that. It has some carrying handles. And that is a big, big girl. Move that out of the way there. All right, so here we go with our system. 25.6 volt is the uh, nominal voltage. So like full charge, 25, six, 100 amp hours. And so you're looking at the equivalent, if you cut this in half, of two 12 volt, 100 amp hour batteries. And so what I'm gonna be able to do with this is hook this up. I don't need a second battery for this. I'll hook this up. My system, and it's kind of weird how this works, is series and parallel. So I have series connections to make 24 volts out of my 12 volt batteries. And then I have parallel connections to link those 24 volt banks into a larger collection. Um, this battery actually finishes out the capacity of my system because you're only able to link four batteries in parallel and four batteries in serial. And so I've reached the capacity on both those actually. So that's what we got there. Um, it does come with the little terminal screws. In fact, it came with extras. I'll go ahead and pull these off. So positive and negative here. And then it even has, oops, gotta pull that off. And then it even has some uh, plastic covers to help protect from, you know, arcing or anything like that. Because this will do a doozy. This, this, this will make you, this will make you regret yourself if you accidentally short between these two terminals. The fact that it's got this is really nice. Lithium osprin, iron phosphate is what type of battery it is. And, uh, and it's a bruiser. So let's take a look at the manual. It included a nice waterproof case here with a manual. There are other uses for a battery this size. In fact, I'm looking, you know, I'm working, I haven't really made any videos on it. I've just been doing it for the passion of it. But I, I picked up a boat last year. You can see it on my uh, second channel, Farpoint Farms Restorations and Repairs. And it had a gas engine, which I'm working on, but that engine's pretty darn old. I reached out to Vavor. I've been looking at getting a electric trolling motor for it. And they have one that's like 80 foot pounds of uh, thrust, but it requires a 24 volt battery. So you could, set something like this into a tr as a trolling motor set up and holy cow would you have a lot of reserve capacity there so that's kind of cool 
25.6 volt, 100 amp hour, 100 amp uh, BMS, this battery management system is built in here. 8.5 inches high, 8.2 inches wide, 21 inches long. And talks about the uh, maximum continuous load is 2,560 watts. That's a lot of juice to draw out of one of these things. I don't know that I would push it in that hard, but you certainly can, it says. Series and parallel connections. It has all kinds. This is a really nice manual here that comes with it. Um, written out in real English and, and very well laid out here. Battery can be stored or operated between negative 20 degrees Celsius. So, so negative 4. No kidding. This battery uh, can be operated at a temperature of negative 4 to 140 degrees. And a temperature between um, 50 degrees and 95 is ideal for long-term storage. Store in a fireproof container and away from children. For a longer lasting product, it's best to store your battery at at least 50% charge. Makes sense. Um, when a battery is charging, voltage charging and discharging, it's got some information on there. You can see regular drop-off current and voltage there. So there's a lot of info here, which this stuff is really important when you go to set this up into your solar system. Your, your solar charger, which I use a Renology charging system, um, the Outback, I think it's called, it's got a whole bunch of like set this, set that, where do you want to max out your charge, where do you want to end up with your charge. This gives you the ability to, to go through and figure all that out. Now you can charge it off of a charger. So if you want to buy a 24 volt car battery charger or battery charger, plug it into house current and charge this to use as just a, like an off grid emergency without solar, you know, you can still use a solar battery pack and, and use it until the battery runs dead. Hopefully the power comes back on, you recharge it, it's ready to go next time. So if you had say an oxygen machine or CPAP machine, something that you didn't want to have non-functional, Putting a battery like this and storing it someplace and having an inverter so you can just operate 120 volt appliances off of it is a inexpensive generator. Certainly a lot quieter than a gas generator would be. Gas generator probably only has you know a, maybe a 400 to 500 hour lifespan before it needs significant work rings or valves or whatever. Where something like this, five to seven thousand time recharge capability, gives it a much longer lifespan. It talks about the different ways to go about charging. Overcharge disconnect would be 30, 30 volts is as much as you want to have in there. 28.8, 29.2 is your, your absolute max charging capacity that they recommend. And then it goes into um, if the battery registers 21.6 volts, is dead. 10% charge is 25.6, which is, you know, there it is. That's your, like, that's your standing voltage there. 100% capacity is actually 27 volts, uh, so to give you an idea of the actual voltage of these things. So it's saying here to connect in series, you can hook two of these together in series to give yourself a 48 volt system. Knowing what I know now about solar setups as opposed to what I knew when I built that solar setup, I would have done a 48 volt system. However, at the time, I couldn't afford to buy two of the batteries that I bought. Batteries are, without a doubt, the most expensive part of a solar setup. And the best part about lithium tech is that it's coming down in price. This thing here, when I built my system in 2020, would have been in the three to $4,000 range. Now it's less than $1,000. So, I mean, it's incredible how quickly these prices have come down, especially in a time in our life, in a time in U.S. history, where the price of everything else is going through the roof. So that's kind of a cool thing that, that uh, is kind of rare. Now, in parallel, we can do a, a four, which is, again, I'm maxed out, four, I've got four in series and four in parallel, so we're, we're pretty much there on my system, which is why this will be the last battery I do for the main system that I'm setting up. Cool. Uh, wearing gloves, they say, is probably not a bad idea, especially if you're messing around. 48 volts is where things start to get dangerous for human beings. Not to say that 24 volts won't burn your hand completely off if you give it a chance, but you start messing around with amperage like we have here, you know, I'm at, uh, you know, 500, 600 amps, no, 700 amps total in my system. It gets a little bit scary. And it's just got, I mean, awesome diagrams on this stuff here. So, look, I've made a lot of videos about these over the years, and I've explained why I like these things. I've explained why I use these things. What I'm going to do here with this particular battery, and it's, it's time to do an update and some upgrades, I've been working on the solar system. We got a new charge controller. We got a, a better inverter. 
we're thinking about adding another 400 watts of solar to max out the, what it is capable of using. That means quicker recharge time when we do have days that are cloudy and then we've, you know, we've used a bunch of power on the next day, this thing will all top itself off uh, more quickly. So I'm going to make a part two of this video and the Power Queen along with the other 100 amp hour Power Queen uh, of the 12 volt version and then a whole bunch of other batteries. Are gonna, we're gonna build a box that's gonna be heavily insulated and heated. We're gonna use heating blankets to heat it and it'll be on a, uh, a thermistor so it'll only turn on the heat when needed. But we have enough reserve capacity, we have enough battery capacity and we have enough solar charging that I can take this setup and I can run it year round, which has been a big problem. When it gets below uh, freezing, we have to shut this thing off and that's, I mean, that sucks because you're, you're losing out on that free money that you're getting when you're you know, not able to operate your system off of solar. Well, with this large battery box, with this insulated battery box, with this heated insulated battery box, we're gonna be able to maintain our lithium batteries all year and use our solar system all year. So as the year goes on, you will see updates on that. I'll be adding, you know, as, as money comes available, I'll buy some wood and we'll start putting that together. So I hope you'll stick around for that. Of course, I'll leave a link to where you can get this Power Queen battery and others just like it. These, uh, this company, as far as some of the companies that I've dealt with for batteries, the information that they include and the quality of the customer service that I've gotten while talking with them shows me that this is one of the better ones out there and I'm looking forward to getting it online and installed. Till next time my friends, take care.